And here we are with another Blunt Business on CannabisRadio.com. Thank you again for listening in. My next guest is a cannabis journalist and enthusiast who is a regular contributor to the likes of Benzinga, Insider, Green Entrepreneur. Well, these are all these publications that I always cite from quite a bit. I'm sure I'm probably cited from our guests at some point or another. She's interviewed over 100 cannabis brands and growers, and she also re- represents a publication we're going to talk about today designed to familiarize readers with top products, help them find the brands that fit their needs, and provide timely information about the craft culture of cannabis. Joining me now is the communications manager of Ask Growers, Tia Moskalenko. Tia, thanks for joining me. Hi, thank you for having me. How are you? I'm uh, doing really well. Thank you again for making a few minutes in, the, in your busy day to go and talk to me. So let's roll real quick, and, and just so you know, I want to go ahead and focus on Ask Growers. And there's, of course, with all the writings that you do, there are a few different areas I would love to go ahead and talk to you about uh, from some of the uh, scribblings you might have made on as, uh, several publications out there. We'll love to get a little further take on as we go through the interview. So Ask Growers, it's a legal cannabis product and marketing website providing readers with regional grower and manufacturer profiles, top brands and products, everything from flowers to cookies, where to buy them, informative co- customer reviews, Ask Growers keeps readers educated and informed about all available brands in the region and enables manufacturers to speak directly to consumers and tell their stories. So we'd love to get your thoughts about the need of an all-in-one industry reference like Ask Growers. Sure, thank you. Actually, you made the great presentation of Ask Growers than I could do. (laughs) Uh, So uh, yeah, Ask Growers is basically the educational platform for uh, growers, cannabis enthusiasts, and pretty much cannabis lovers. As you mentioned, you could uh, find anything uh, specific on our website because it's kind of an informational bureau online. And uh, we have a mission to educate people and to let them know that it's not a drug, how to, I mean, especially if you are a newbie in the industry, you have no idea how to roll a joint or where to buy weed. You can always visit our website and see how it goes, where to start with, and uh, eventually the last steps of that. I mean, even how to grow weed. So yes, this is all about that. Website is um, askgrowers.com. Uh, if you can, well, just we take a minute, uh, give me a little bit of an insight as to where, what are some of the few things that you can definitely find on the website when you go there? Uh, what's been <laughs> some of the parts of reference that have been very popular that uh, you've gotten a lot of uh, feedback on? Sure. So you mentioned popular. Uh, we have uh, basically three main um, like sectors on the website. Basically, that's a blog where we post all the information and interviews. Uh, also, we have strains and uh, also we have brain brands. So uh, when we speak about the popular stuff on the website, that's um, strains, of course, because um, I remember myself like two years ago when you're looking for something, you're not looking for a brand, you're looking for some particular strain or something to get relaxed in the evening or something to get energized in the morning before work. And uh, we have like 80 or 75 maybe percent of our traffic basically for strains. So people are eager um, to look for a particular strain and see the description, how it goes when you smoke it and et cetera, et cetera, rather than uh, searching for a particular brand because you know that there are like thousand or even millions brands uh, throughout the world. And uh, yeah, the most popular thing that people are looking at their website, that would be just strains. Um, we also um, had a chance to interview famous people in the industry like Tommy Chong and Alexandra Chong. They're not relatives, <laughs> but still they have the same last name. And um, we realized that uh, it's even less popular than searching for strange. So uh, yeah, I would, my answer would be that the most popular thing that people are searching for on our website, that's strange. And I know also you were focused on brands and also the blog that you have is pretty extensive from everything that you talk about. You're going through the various different sectors, growing tips, industry, health guides. Mm-hmm. And really, I'd love to get your take on the thought of when you see a lot of publications that are coming out, you know, there's obviously the uh, the more mainstream or more legacy type of press that has struggled to go ahead and really keep a foot as to what's going on. I noticed that Ask Rose is completely an educational base. Uh, yeah. Without any trying to bring any particular 
selling any kind of a allegiance to any particular brands. It's just giving the information out there and letting the reader go ahead and judge for themselves. But also mm-hmm. just the thought of starting up a new publication. Like, what, what can you tell me about when this was brought together and someone like yourself, you know, doing so much writing as you do a lot of freelance work and deciding to go ahead and also contribute and put a lot of presence into Ask Growers. Talk to me about that and also drawing other writers as well to follow suit. Uh, sure, we have a couple of writers. We're trying actually to investigate the industry as much as we can, but as you know, it uh, it's developing like every single hour, I would say, not just like every single day. So uh, we actually are studying along with our readers as well, I would say. And uh, beside the interviews, beside the tips and tricks, we're trying to investigate what are the legal situations in the United States, where the um, pros and cons in particular strains or uh, what are the pros and cons to uh, try edibles, for instance, for the first time when you're like a newbie in the, in the sphere. And um, I think um, we're just uh, trying more and more to get involved into the industry ourselves, plus to educate people who are reading us. And uh, I think at the very point, like we're about two years, uh, in the industry, we're doing pretty great because uh, we're just trying to uh, share all our experience because um, the um, um, founder of the As Growers, Igor, is actually um, like having like a few plants. He's growing uh, weed and it's always interesting to know what are the steps, what were the mistakes and we're sharing this uh, via our blog. So we're trying to make it as educational as possible. And uh, it's not like we're sharing information, but we're uh, trying to understand it ourselves. And uh, afterwards, if we're making some mistakes, we're making explanations, what you shouldn't do, what you should do. And uh, I think this is the main thing uh, in our blog, I would say. Well, any good writing, you would also want to have a little sense of relatability and at least a little bit of hands-on experience. So it also really helps when, especially if you're going to be putting anything so specific on cannabis. So what I want to do now is there's a number of stories you've written recently that I, I thought was a lot of different subjects you, you touched upon that I'd love to go and get your take on now. Uh, in Green Entrepreneur recently, you wrote, quote, despite this widespread legalization of cannabis in both the U.S. and abroad, the industry still has a long road ahead of itself in terms of establishing itself as a titan it might truly become. Changes, trends, and challenges you highlighted include A, laws surrounding the production, distribution, and sale of wholesale cannabis will continue to dominate the news, and B, startup funding, cannabis finance, and banking will continue to be ongoing concerns for countless smaller businesses in the industry. Experts believe the overall outlook of the industry remains sound, and that investors, businesses, and consumers alike should only expect to see more signs of strength in the future. So, what have you been able to unpack from the regulatory and financial fronts? Mm-hmm. That's a great question. Thank you. So, um, I would like to start with the cannabis finance uh, point. I think because uh, this was this was something that I was actually interested in when I was searching the information and reading the articles. This is a really kind of cool thing when you start realizing that the finance and actually the economy of the country are. Uh, they have like a win-win strategy, you know. Um, they are getting more and more taxes to the uh, to the country, uh, and uh, when the cannabis industry is legal in a particular state, or let's just assume that it's legal in the whole United States. Uh, well, basically, I don't I don't think I need to explain <laughs> why it's good. Uh, so um, for me, when I saw the numbers, it's like. Um, $30.1 billion per year would uh, uh, United States government, uh, United States receive when they just uh, make it legalized by 2024, or 2025. So mm-hmm. I think it's a great opportunity for the government people to think about the chance to legalize it. Uh, we're talking about medical or recreation and marijuana, it doesn't matter. So I think it will have a great impact on the um, economy. So I think uh, that was the first thing that I unpacked from uh, the searchings and um, 
when I was writing the article. And um, it also, of course, depends on the laws. And I hope that in the nearest future, I think that's gonna take maybe decades, not just a few years ahead, when uh, the majority of states will make it legal. So yeah. I'm not a forecaster, but I hope that uh, not just in the US, but in the European countries, it will be not like a, uh, something like a drug acceptance, but um, it will be something that actually helps your health, helps your mood, helps your like mental, mental and physical health. So uh, that was uh, uh, something uh, special that I knew and remembered. And uh, I think this is the main point we should uh, think and uh, be aware of uh, when we're speaking about the cannabis industry for the next couple of years, for sure. I do like the forecasting you made. I do think there's quite a few people on the investment side that are on the sidelines waiting to get in. And that's really just what's also happening as well is that while we're waiting for some kind of word back from Congress, I think there's a lot of people on the sidelines. who are just waiting to go ahead and find out, waiting the wings as to when they can initiate. We already know that in the meantime, multi-state operators are looking to go and expand in the other states or some companies are looking to be in the multi-state operator model because small business owners, as you may mention, you know, they have concerns, so they might just need to attach themselves to bigger firms and just yeah. take take the shot in there and take the payoff, I guess. That's pretty much it. So these mm -hmm. are the kind of issues we have coming up. And there's others I want to ask you about as well that I want to go, go to a commercial break real quick and come back to you and talk to you about. I'm here with the communications manager of Ask Growers, Tia Moskalenko here on Blunt Business, back after a short break. Rolling into some sponsors, but we'll be right back with more Blunt Business. We're back with Tia Moskalenko, communications manager of Ask Growers. And while we're going through this, make sure to go ahead and there's a lot of information at the the website she represents, askgrowers.com. Just look through. There's just so much there. I know I want to go and bookmark it for myself to go and follow up on stories down the line and make sure you do the same, okay? Now, you were in Benzinga about mergers and acquisitions and monopolies in the marijuana industry. And this kind of falls in line with what we were talking about earlier on the regulatory and financial fronts. And when I mentioned MSOs and the real expansion we're starting to see right now, something that was really definitely discussed during our MJ BizCon coverage, which you can find over at Grassroots Marketing. Go and take a look at it at CannabisRadio.com. Now, let me go and read real quick from this uh, a passage real quick. Quote, the monopolies have become part of the marijuana industry. Many big players are taking the smaller ones. In addition, some states allow vertical integration, which means that one company or a set of few owners operate not just the production part, but everything else, including wholesale and retail. Many people in the industry are worried about all the acquisitions and mergers as they lead to monopolies. Such actions also lead to local, lower quality products. The money no longer goes into the hands of local communities. Instead, it goes right into the hands of big corporations and MSOs. I really appreciate you said this thought on. Let me go ahead and follow along and say, you also wrote, multi-state operators, quote, represent the concentration of power. Logically, such operators have a significant advantage over small businesses that operate locally. The dominance of big players can be observed as a result of current state regulation. In other words, state regulators need to take the steps and work towards creating certain restrictions so the small businesses get the chance to compete with MSOs. So this is something I've been talking about quite a bit here in the program because we know that whatever regulation comes in, we know that big al big alcohol and big tobacco have already started to infiltrate and work together in an alliance because they've already been experienced in the, you know, the abolition of their products and be able to go ahead and get their product to market and, you know, be able to monetize as much as they want, make big business out of it. Same thing here. The little man can be left out. So do you think there will be any room? for smaller companies not engulfed by MSO monopolies to thrive in the industry once the federal government passes legalization? Uh, thank you for the question. I hope and I think that will be some place for uh, smaller businesses because uh, I think uh, that's my personal opinion, but I think that should be some kind of a balance between the monopoly and uh, uh, the smaller businesses. I think they should live. They uh, are taking place and they're, I think they're great. It's just a matter of these uh, maybe hierarchy uh, in this question. Uh, so I hope that uh, the smaller businesses will uh, thrive for their rights uh, to exist and they will um, 
maybe pay attention to some uh, minor or major details to improve themselves. Maybe that's kind of a, a thing uh, where they should think how to improve to be better, not to be just uh, like swallowed by the big boss company. And um, yeah, I think that should that there should be a balance, but I think uh, moving forward, there will be more and more cases where the monopoly is like the key. And um, uh, yeah, but I th but I still think uh, that smaller companies should exist. They're I think they're doing great business. But will they have room in the market to go and carve their niche out? We also know that right now in the space we have a lot of craft cannabis companies. You know, really just the transition of, of rephrasing terpenes and uh, particular strains to go into craft cannabis. The same idea as it might be craft alcohol or craft beer that same kind of concept is coming into the space very quickly now. The other thing I also want to make point of is that when you mentioned about these actions leading to lower quality products, I would also add lead to less compliance. And I think that's another issue that needs to be addressed if you're going to have these companies come in to do the – because any big corporate structure, and all due respect, there's a lot of people that make good money, but there will be, op there will be people that will be the facilitators, the people that are working for these companies – What's going to be done is make the most money at the bare minimum of what needs to be done in terms of compliance. Plus, you know, the other thought is even though there might be government programs that will be put in place to make sure that the smaller business owners, even those that might be disenfranchised or getting the chance at opportunity zones, those opportunities will be there. But they have to be set into place where there can be a competitive market. And I think that's yeah. one of the, those are a couple of the issues I have. Uh, just to add along with what you wrote, but I really appreciate where you came across and that story. Now, mm -hmm. another story I want to ask you about is something you have written on Ask Growers. And you wrote, quote, it's clear that cannabis is becoming mainstream and the industry is attracting various types of investors, including actors, musicians, and athletes. Many celebrities are getting involved in embracing the opportunity to, the, to legal, on the legalization of marijuana across the U.S. provides. Now that... Cannabis is socially acceptable. The number of stars deciding to jump on the bandwagon and create cannabis brands rises. The current situation around weed and the fact that many famous people take the chance to step out on the market begs the question of the value celebrities see in creating cannabis brands. And I've talked about this extensively when it comes to celebrity versus influencer and who's really important to that. I remember we're talking to one of a, a, a legal counsel where we talked about that pretty extensively just recently. Uh, Priya Sapori, I, I spoke with about that uh, works of the firm for Greenberg Glusker. I specifically talked about this subject here. So my question to you is, is it because they're passionate about it? Is it just about the money? Talk to me about the celebrity involvement versus investment. And More than one in three people will face cancer in their lifetime. Unfortunately, fear can stop you from getting your cancer screening, but it won't stop cancer. Early detection can save your life. Don't wait for symptoms to appear to act. Cancer screening is safe, effective, and accessible for everyone, including free or low-cost screening programs. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com right now for free screening resources and recommendations from the American Cancer Society. Don't wait. Early detection can save your life. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com today. Cancer screen info info.com is the power of celebrity really making that much of an impact um i think uh i will start from the last question i think um the power of celebrity really making the great impact at the early stages but i think um if the person isn't involved in the um, um in any stages of the development <clears throat> sorry, Sorry, in the development of the product, in the development of the brand, I don't think it's going to last more than maybe a year or something. But it's only because you have uh, your face on uh, your brand. But um, I truly believe that there are some brands and there are some uh, celebrities that uh, really want to share their experience. So they uh, um, producing, uh, it doesn't matter, CBD or THC um, uh, products, but uh, maybe they have had a specific situation in their life and they really want to help people and uh, they're actually paying their attention they're um, spending some time um, reading everything then uh, sharing with the audience it's just not about being a face on the um, on the brand it's just about to be involved and I think uh, 
the vast majority of celebrities right now, they're maybe thinking that uh, they will have a larger income because they are opening up their cannabis brand. It's always interesting, uh, especially for me, when someone's uh, like, I don't know, maybe at some point Tom Cruise will open up a cannabis brand and I will be the first one who wants uh, to try something from uh, their product list. But uh, if uh, he's only the picture on the brand, on the website, uh, I don't think I'm going to be that one buyer uh, who will actually be uh, with the brand for years. I think you should be really involved. And um, I think uh, uh, in America, it's the vast majority of celebrities. They just want to have uh, maybe an advertisement. Uh, maybe they just want to earn some money. But I'm more eager to say that's all about the money. I think like maybe 20% of celebrities are eager to share the experience, share it with people, um, explain how it works, uh, how it can help you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, my thought on this, I think maybe the vast majority, uh, hopefully not, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's more like uh, they are advertising themselves and trying to earn some money from the different industry. But that's only my uh, way of thinking. Maybe I'm wrong. I no, hope but, I'm wrong. Well, I, I like where you're thinking about that. The other thing, too, is that for me, I think it's also where I talk about when it comes to influencers and celebrities, it's the credibility and what their real involvement yeah. is. But I think there's also... If we identify the benchmarks, like what are the things that some of these celebrities are going to do in order to position themselves? Because are they going to be worried about the clout they receive as a result? You know, because the kind of a stigma mm -hmm. that's still in place. Are they going to be, it's almost like how cancel culture actually. And I know this is not a subject people want to talk about, but really it's a matter of, you know, there's going to be some negative feedback from it from somebody in your audience space or just people that in the press that, you know, not ask growers but there are gonna be people out there outside the industry that are going to put a said celebrity in a bad light as a result they always still do anyway now so the stigma comes into play uh, jim belushi comes into, into the space or you know seth rogan comes into space you know there's some people already come equipped with already some kind of a stigma beforehand but then you look at are they going to conferences are they, are they speaking quite often you know are they accessible to the industry itself for people to go ahead and have a chance to talk to them, learn about them and, you know, not look at, you know, the, the industry that's going to be communicating with these people. We're not stands. Okay. We're not people who are just fan fans of, of your products. We're going to come meet you. We're going to want to talk about your business. We're going to learn about what brought you in and really exactly. if there's chances to work together. Exactly. Yes. You read my mind, actually. <laughs> I totally agree on this. I mean, seriously. And uh, you were talking about Jim Belushi. I'm uh, on Twitter. I follow him on Twitter as well as uh, Seth Rogen. And uh, I think uh, these are the great representatives of the cannabis industry that they are actually uh, care about the brand. And uh, they're doing enormous uh, quantity of posts. They're investigating in the industry. They're making some new products. They're working with their uh, co-workers in the um, brand. So I think this is a great example of how it should look like because you're not just selling your face, you're selling a product and it should be, uh, everything should be accurate. Everything should be up to date and people who, I don't know, in, in a year or maybe in, uh, at some point, if they want to talk to you, how you actually started and uh, how you were how you actually overcame the objections. I think that should be something that's uh, really easy to access. So maybe that's another reason, another, an, another reason why uh, it's really difficult to, for celebrities to cope with all the movies or with all the, um, I don't know, sports and uh, yeah. cannabis industry uh, brands. So. Yeah, this is this is something that needs another investigation, I think. Well, and I'll, <laughs> but, I'll gotta yeah. say this too, that if if celebrities or anybody that's, you know, we know that all the celebrities coming in, they're coming in after the peak of their popularity. Exactly, we, we know that yeah. aware of that. But I'll tell you this is that, you know, the smart uh, those that are coming in using their popularity, whichever what what uh, people that you know are familiar with their celebrity as they are. 
I mean, the thing is, is mm-hmm. that it's the ones that come in as entrepreneurs and just realize this is the next phase of success for me, and I'm going to do very well on it. And I think the best example, which I think every celebrity needs to follow, is Tommy Chong. He is yeah. the benchmark. He's the he's the role model of how people uh, in success in the canvas industry. And this and it doesn't even matter about the fact that where he came from with his movies and his comedy. He has grown into something in itself, and also been the most one of the most accessible people we had. He did a podcast with us. We've had him on. I've gotten to interview him because we had him so on so many times. The chance to go ahead and speak with him, it's amazing. But accessibility, that's very important. And I think that I hope everybody else out there, because I mean, for me right now, it's going to be tough. If, if, if I want to go reach out to Willie Nelson or Jim Belushi or Seth Rogen, you know what? That's going to be hard to get those people online. It's, it's always exactly. been. And yeah. this is regardless of their involvement and, and not just disputing or discrediting their involvement or if they're just a spokesperson looking for a cash grab. I'm not even saying that. But I think those kind of issues are very important. Yeah, yeah. Completely agree on this. I remember uh, if we're speaking about Tommy Chan, I remember he once said to me, uh, you know, I'm actually not thinking uh, about cannabis like it has strains. If I see there is weed, I just smoke it. I just don't yeah. think about any kind of strains. I mean, I don't actually, I'm not trying to get acquainted with the every and single strain that are in the world. I'm just smoking it and then I'm just trying to realize whether, whether I like it or not. This is... Uh, this, this was funny because I'm uh, actually trying to investigate what strain is better, um, when and how should I consume it, and uh, yeah, the phrase from Tommy Chong, that was awesome. Yeah, it was amazing also talking to Tommy a few months back, and just the fact that uh, it was also because it was promoting the rosin bomb, and was a chance of kind of asking the same kind of questions, just talking about current events in the cannabis uh, industry, and how sharp i mean just spot on with so many different answers he had and to just get the chance because i don't want to just talk about his career and that was exactly what i'm saying my detriment here is that if i'm bringing him on you know the blunt business program i want to talk about the issues that that matter so it's not just let me just go ahead and you know praise you for up and smoke like everybody everybody else has done for you all due respect you know or you know whatever you've done which has been a lot in a great standing career that stands for itself. I want. Uh, there's other things I want to talk to you about. I mean, this. Uh, you, there's something to be said about that. I don't want ever want to look at a celebrity that comes on board and you know, not mm-hmm. look at them as as somebody that is a business person that is understanding and probably has some great ideas out there. Let's do it. I mean, the fact that Christy Hefner spoke at a uh, MGM Pact like that's somebody I absolutely want to go and hear from, from the success of Playboy to now coming in and being involved in, in the industry in some way, she perform in, in, in an investment quotient. I want to know about that. So I'm not worried about, oh, let me ask you about Playboy. No, no, let's talk about the industry. And I want the opportunities to have that conversation. Exactly. That's cool. So let me go into this. we got to go for one more break. And then when we come back, I want to ask you about how technology is transforming the cannabis industry. You've written about that. And we'll talk about more. With the communications manager of Ask Growers, Tia Moskalenko, here on Blunt Business. Stay with us. Rolling into some sponsors, but we'll be right back with more Blunt Business. I'm back with final questions with Tia Moskalenko, communications manager of Ask Growers. Website is askgrowers.com. Make sure to bookmark it. There's a lot of information there, and you won't be able to probably get through it in just one setting. Just make sure to look at it. There's a lot of content being added pretty regularly. On your Medium page, uh, you wrote about how technology is transforming the cannabis industry. Quote, the cannabis audience is more diverse and the weed products keep evolving to meet the needs of those who appreciate the plant. These days, the market features edibles, capsules, vaping oils, to name a few. Many technological breakthroughs have helped the marijuana market in terms of growing, testing, reliable, sustainable packaging, and more so the products that hit the market can be the best of the best quality. Uh, The industry's faces many challenges though starting with marketing restrictions and the fact that banks still don't want to work with cannabis companies once again thanks to tech that's supporting the market many things became easier technologies not only support the cannabis industry but they're also reshaping it and helping it to develop quote end quote so there's a lot of software as a service companies we talked to on our mg business conference uh this past month tia and 
They're yep. talking about serving for compliance and full service operations in general. Now, we know there are a lot of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs that are behind these products. So how do you think tech continues to carve their place in the industry? Because we know they're talking about a lot of companies looking for data, looking for analytics, looking for ways to organize their seed to sell process. Um, yeah, um, I've actually been to MJBSCon last month and I was pretty shocked that uh, I had no idea how many companies are in tech industry who's actually cooperating with the cannabis brand. And uh, that was really interesting for me to get acquainted with uh, a bunch of people who represent the tech industry uh, with the cannabis itself. And uh, I remember uh, I met one guy, um, I'm so sorry, I don't remember the brand name, uh, the company name, but uh, what the guys are doing, they're basically helping cannabis brands uh, from the scratch to organize everything, to open up the shop, to open up the, uh, I don't know, to help with all the equipment. They are uh, sharing the experience and um, with the brand owner and helping you uh, to realize what are the pros and cons within the particular situation so you're not losing your money. And uh, there are many, many uh, companies uh, from the tech industry that are eager to help the cannabis industry as well because they understand that it's like a um, pretty new niche. It's uh, developing with the... Uh, within hours, within days. And uh, I think uh, that uh, tech and uh, cannabis industry industry uh, will work together moving forward because um, let's just imagine if you're the butt tender in the dispensary, it will be really easier for you when you have a specific program, you have a specific laptop for uh, selling your products to see what's available, what's not. Uh, also, it's going to be easier for your client. So he's not standing in the queue for a couple of hours. And I think um, it's great that people are thinking um, like forward and they understand and realize what's going to be easier and how to compete with all the um, hard things during the first steps when you open up the brand, for instance. And um, I think that uh, this is a great opportunity for us to know uh, what kind of um, struggles people are suffering on the early stages, what kind of um, tech help they need uh, to make it easier. And I think this is uh, a great topic to discuss like for hours. Um, so uh, yeah, I think the technology is moving forward and I think uh, why not include in there the cannabis industry itself. And uh, I think it's really helpful for brands, especially when they're just on the early stages of their uh, development. So let's go and wrap things up. Again, website is askgrowers.com. And also there's so many places you write, uh, Tia. How can people go ahead and follow along and really keep in touch with everywhere you are writing and where people can go and find your next stories? Um, I'm working on that, actually. <laughs> I think the next story will be on Mass Growers, as uh, I really love to post uh, like something new um, on our website and then just test it, uh, what's going to be, what's going to feed the other websites. And uh, despite the Zim and um, other websites have been like Metro Times, I guess, as well, have been uh, published. I think that's going to be an American website for sure. Uh, but I'm still thinking uh, how to implement the story so the readers of the particular website um, are involved as well and it's interesting for them to read it. So um, I'm still working on that, but I hope um, it's going to be Benzinga as well. And uh, Maybe that's going to be um, Cannabis Times. I yeah. Jesus Christ, that's embarrassing. I forgot the name of Cannabis the Cannabis Business Times. It's supposed, it's supposed to be Cannabis Times or something like that. Right. <laughs> well, no, I know there's a lot of places I've seen you in Fresh Toast. I've seen in uh, the Detroit Metro Times. Yes. There's a lot of places. It's hard to keep up. I can only imagine. But uh, um, yeah. Oh. Now, if uh, so, is there any any particular way people can go and contact you? Any social media links that we can go and read, uh, pass on to our, our listeners? Uh, I'm actually posting my stories in Twitter and on Medium as well. 
Um, I'm getting more involved in LinkedIn uh, stories and uh, article publishing. So basically LinkedIn, Twitter, Medium, and um, yeah, and on our website for sure. Oh, what's your Twitter uh, handle? Um, sure, it's uh, at Tia40099133. You can follow me on Twitter and read my stories when I publish them. <laughs> and I just followed you there. Hopefully everybody will also follow Tia there as well. And let them know, let her know that you found a, a, all her work from the Blunt Business Program. And also, make sure to go ahead and subscribe and share the show. Please go and rate review on Apple Podcasts. And wherever you find your podcast, make sure to go ahead and latch on the Blunt Business Show so you can never miss an episode. We're going to continue to continue to record through the holidays so you'll have more episodes you can follow along with. We're not stopping. We're not missing a beat. Thank you for listening in, and we'll talk to you next time. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast, republication, or retransmission of this program without proper consent is prohibited.